discriminate validity. This metric measures the extent to which construct is empirically distinct from all the other constructs in the structural model. Now, each of these constructs in your study must be different from each other. Now, in order to assess that empirically, we use discriminant validity assessment. We've got the results in summary underscore simple objects. Now, how do we retrieve it? Let's have a look. And our output is in summary underscore simple. Now, this particular summary object here holds the PLS estimated model that is simple underscore model. Here it is what we did here. Look at this. So the estimated model here, the results were stored in this summary object. Now let's retrieve our HTMT values. Let's add a dollar sign. And what do I want? I want validity. Now I want HTMT. Now let's run HTMT. Now look at this. All of it is less than 0.85. Although this is approaching 0.85, but it's not 0.85. It's less than 0.85. This shows that discriminant validity is established through HTMT as well. In addition to examining the HTMT values, researchers should test whether the HTMT values are significantly different from one or a lower threshold such as 0.9 or even 0.85. Now this analysis actually requires computing bootstrap confidence interval obtaining by running the bootstrapping procedure. Now to do so, we are going to use this function and then assign the output to this particular object as we've done in previous lectures as well. Now what you will do is, in addition to examining the HTMT values, we are going to examine the bias corrected confidence interval as well. Now again, once we run the bootstrap model, we are going to generate the summary and store the summary in summary underscore boot object. Now how do we do this? Let's do this again. I'm going to come back to this slide, but first let's run our bootstrap model. Let's copy this. If you look here, now this is your bootstrap model function. What model you want to estimate? Again, that PLS model that we estimated, simple underscore model. And your bootstrapping size, normally it's recommended to have 10,000, but for now we are going to keep it to 1,000. And then we are going to assign the summary output from this bootstrapped model to summary underscore boot. And we are going to keep the alpha value to 0 0.10. Now let's run it. Let's go there. Press enter, press V. And now let's run it. Okay, so bootstrapping model using semin R, it may take some time. Now your bootstrapping is complete and you've got your results in this summary object. Now, how do I retrieve the results? And how do we see the output? Now we need to extract the bootstrapping confidence intervals of the HTMT by inspecting this particular sub object from this object. So let's do this. Now researchers should always use 10,000 bootstrap samples, but obviously this is just an example. So let's first get the output and then we are going to interpret it as well. Now let's copy this, copy and let's paste it here and let's run it to get our output so this is your bootstrapped HTMT now how do you interpret this now look at this this is the same as we had in earlier output look at this the HTMT output 0.692 between vision and development 0.692 between vision and development so it's the same thing but what we are interested is this here these values here so how do you interpret these values so bootstrapped htmt now the output here displays the original ratios as we saw earlier the values do not change and it gives us bootstrapped mean that is bootstrapped standard deviation the t statistics and what we are interested is this five percent confidence interval 95 percent confidence interval now the bootstrapping procedure allows for constructing confidence interval that is this in order to test the null hypothesis that is h0 hdmt greater than or equal to 1 against the alternate hypo hypothesis that is h1 hdmt less than 1 a confidence interval containing the value 1 that is h0 holds this one holds now if there is a 1 here is there a 1 here no 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 there is no one here 
Now, does one fall in between these values? No, the one does not fall in between these values. Now, this indicates that your alternative hypothesis is substantiated and you reject your null hypothesis. And this indicates there are no issues of discriminant validity. A confidence interval containing value 1. No, this does not contain a value 1. If it had a value 1, this would have indicated that there is lack of discriminant validity. In this case, the value 1 falls outside the interval range. So there is no value 1 in between. And this suggests that the two constructs are empirically distinct. Now, vision is distinct from development, vision is distinct from rewards, so on and so forth. And if you want to know further, please do read this book.